nothing feels worse than ending the night rattling off a list of all the ways you screwed up, didn't do enough, or are just falling short in life. As doers, people pleasers, and high-functioning anxious types, we're constantly setting high standards for ourselves. Striving is important. Having goals and pushing yourself to reach them is incredible. But the problem is that somehow we've let the jack out of the box, the expectations growing at an infinite rate, and instead of building self-esteem, we're winding up burnt out and in a deep state of negative self-judgment. So let's talk about what we can do instead. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another solo episode of the Untethering Shame podcast. I'm your host, Kira Wackett, and today I want to talk about the problem with expectations. Let's just start by saying the key message of this entire episode, you're being unreasonable with yourself. Whenever I start working with a new client, I have the same conversation. How do we reframe your goals and expectations to support meaningful and sustainable change and growth? We can't feel better right away. That's unrealistic and often unhelpful. See, we often don't seek help until we're in a deep space of despair and anguish. We feel overwhelmed with pain and distress and long for a fix or solution to make everything better or feel resolved. We need to get back to riding ourselves into the ground. So make this pain go away as quickly as possible and with the least amount of time and effort. I often refer to this as the hunt for a Band-Aid solution. By doing this, we're setting avoidant goals, meaning I just want to be anywhere but here. So give me whatever you've got. We believe we should be able to fix it, whatever it is, and that we just have to work harder to choose happiness. We set impossible standards and then get upset when things don't happen as quickly as we think they should. The anger is quickly overridden with shame. We did everything the BuzzFeed article said would help us to feel more confident at work or that the TikTok video said would make us feel less anxious. So why don't we feel better? Look, meaningful change doesn't work this way. It's a series of 1% changes that accumulate over time and with numerous setbacks and swerves along the way. Change is a progressive erosion of maladaptive and shame-based thinking patterns that requires us to generate insight before engaging in intentional action. For decades, the stories that anchor us in unhappiness and disconnection have been there. They can't be rewritten in a day, a week, or in many cases, even a year or two. Change takes time, no matter how hard it is to hear it. It means shifting our focus from output-driven to progress-driven living. We have to get clear on and deep dive into our pain before we can actually heal it. This means making more space for self-exploration and curiosity. We have to shift from the anywhere but here thinking to defining where we want to go, who we want to be, and then figuring out how we're going to get there. So I want you to ask yourself, What pressure have you been putting on yourself to be further ahead or to see changes in your life that might not be reasonable? What thoughts and internalized rules do you have to let go of to better make space for that self-nurturance, curiosity, and reflection that's needed to truly establish new connections and live a life you can thrive in? Look, stop ascribing judgment to yourself for not being better after one therapy session or a coaching session or reading a couple of books. We need to instead get clear on your actual problem. So where's the source of your pain and stuckness? How is it affecting you? What do you want to do about it? And what are you willing to do about it? And what do you need to make this change so that you can know your life will be different? And honestly, for many of us, we even have to reflect on how will our life be different? The reality is in these instances, what you're seeing, what you're reading, it's generic. It's helpful, but it's a broad spectrum antibiotic. It's meant to treat a variety of different things for all different people. When we're talking about making meaningful and sustainable change, it has to be more specific and specific, meaning it fits for you. Now, again, to be clear, this is going to take you some time. So I encourage you to come back to this episode when you're ready to do some of those reflection questions. Sit around and define those things for yourself. And remember, when that pain shows up, that discomfort is there, you're automatically going to want to stuff it down or make it go away as quickly as possible. Instead, try to invite it to sit next to you so that as you go through those questions, you can get to that place of acknowledging, validating, and beginning to define what healing looks like to really get clear on where you want to go. 
Only once you've done all of that do I want you to now sit down and focus on, so what's my next 1%? Once I know that final destination point, which again, is still going to evolve and change, we're not getting fixated on one point, but just that general direction, then we can walk it back and say, so what's that next step for me? As you go through that, make sure that you let me know if you have questions, comments, ideas, things that I can do to support you in that process. Thank you so much for joining me today for today's. I truly appreciate you taking that time to listen, and I hope that you find this little nugget and reflection valuable. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. Anything that comes up, again, as you're going through that process where I can support you, but also more ideas that you have, those next steps, so that I can be thinking about the content that can best serve you in that process. So check out the Q&A, fill out the poll, or send me a voice memo so that we can connect and I can support you in this work. If you found today's episode valuable and insightful, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a review, hit that five-star button, and of course, share this episode with someone you think could benefit from hearing it. Now, if you're ready to take the work out of the podcast platform and dive deeper into that healing journey, be sure to click the link in the show notes to download my free handout, Five Things Shame Resilient People Do Every Day and Three Things They Don't. And if you're looking for more ways to connect, you'll find links to my website and YouTube channel below, as well as a link to set up a discovery call to go over any questions you have about program offerings or next steps in your shame resilience journey. Thank you again for tuning in. And remember, change takes time, but every step counts. So stay the course, stay hopeful, and stay committed to your well-being. We'll be back with more insightful discussions to support you on your journey. Until then, take care, and we'll see you next episode.